I'm at my favorite antique mall, which is the old Strapona antique mall right there. I'm just gonna walk in and see what they have. Wow, and just like that guys, right at the entrance, look at what welcomes me. Look at this sick device. For $90? Yes, please. Now, unfortunately, the cassette portion was not working. I mean, I could hear the motor whirling, but nothing would move, no cassette would play. So here's my attempt to fix this. So first I removed the battery compartment and um, just take out those uh, connectors. Basically the speakers are connected to the deck uh, through those cables in the back there. Pulling them off was fairly easy to do, it's just RCA cables and then I proceeded to take out um, all the screws from the back of the deck itself. Out as well. I took out the screws at the bottom of the deck as well, a couple of them there. And then I was able to lift the back of the deck. However, it doesn't lift fully out because uh, there are these cables that are connected to the circuit uh, board. So you have to really take the time to pull those out. There's quite a few of these um, cables connected to the circuit. Um, Now to try and remember where each cable goes, what I did was I basically used my phone to take photos and that is helpful, that is really helpful practice. Now you may hear my son practicing his saxophone in the background. so. And I found out that the old belt had pretty much turned into a gooey mess, yeah. as you can see here. But first I had to get to it, and getting to it was <laughs> quite difficult actually. I took out the screws at the bottom of the circuit board. And then the cassette... Um, door compartment that cover just comes off. I had to also take out the buttons and uh, dials on the front of the deck. And then after that, the front cover of the deck just pulls out quite easily. Something that I should have done earlier was actually take out the, the speaker and handle Assembly. I still need to get in there. So what I'm gonna do is take this thing off. Easier said than done actually. I had to take quite a few screws from from there just to hopefully allow the compartment to or the cassette mechanism to really like pop out. The last screw connects a, a ground wire, so that was something I had to be mindful of. There were still some more uh, wires to disconnect from the board over there. So taking pictures is actually is, is an absolute must. I had to pull those wires out of the... Um, they were tied together. I had to 
disconnect that just to allow the cassette mechanism itself to be able to be pulled out and now I had access to the flywheel and the motor so then I proceeded to clean the mechanism and I used just q-tips and um, rubbing alcohol it's quite dirty actually and once I had finished it I decided to go further and just clean the inside of the, of the deck really I also deoxidized um, the switches while I was while I had access. So it's always a good idea to do that. And for that I used contact cleaner. Then I proceeded to clean the heads and the pinch roller. I had ordered some some belts in the past so fortunately for me one of them was the right fit so I proceeded to put the new belt on once I have access to the mechanism it's easy to put the belt on and I had to test the motor to make sure it works so I plugged in the cable to the board that supplies it with power and press play and engage the motor and you can see that it actually works so that was a good sign that felt good actually so now I had to put back on the bracing strip which I had removed to access the flywheel now I had to test it with the cassette before I closed it up you don't want to close it up and find out something actually is wrong it plays I couldn't hear any sound but I was I'm fairly confident that once I connected all the wires, I would be able to hear the sound and it would just play just fine. So I decided to put everything back together. Now putting things together is a bit easier for me really than tearing apart because I didn't have a service manual. I just figured this out on the fly as I went. So that was more difficult, disassembling it actually, than putting it back together because once I had taken it apart, I pretty much knew where everything should go. And to be honest, this whole process took me a few days. I had to make sure that I had put in the felt pads that go underneath the case on top of those some of those switches there. Once I figured out where each one goes, I put the cover back on and now there are some glide pads that the dials actually sit on as well. You have to make sure that those are put on properly as well. And then put the screws back on. And now put the battery cover back on. All the dials go on. Those are the glide pads. Make sure that those are put on properly. Then I decided to disinfect the whole thing and clean it up. One thing I love in this pandemic era is 
I mean, hand sanitizer sprays are quite common now. So it's easy to just use these to clean gadgets. I love those for cleaning gadgets. They actually work very well. I did the same for the speakers and the handle. And now assembling the, the speakers and the handles is it's easier than I made it appear here. The only tricky part is that this particular system has speakers that can be configured differently to basically either lay on the side or on top or different configurations and it's uh, a really cool and interesting design. And the handle just clicks in place. Make sure that it's firm and secured and we're in business. Nice. Oh, and don't forget the cables in the back connect back into the deck. Nice. And with that, I proceeded to do the final test. Make sure that the cassette compartment opens normally. It does. That's a good sign. Oh, and the radio's on. Switch it to tape. There we go. And as you can tell, the sound is quite beautiful.